Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar from uh, Millpark Education and chatting through our BCom in accounting. Awesome to have you guys on board um, and just super excited for the hour or so ahead um, of, of discussion. Uh, my name is Gareth Olafia. I'm going to be the MC for the session and you can see hopefully on your screens in front of you um, the beautiful people I am joined by in the session. Um, I'm going to introduce them super briefly, but they're all going to be participating in the conversation. So I'll give you more in-depth um, information on, on each of them as we go. So very briefly, um, we'll go through uh, everyone on the webinar. We've got uh, Shamari Volmerans, um, who is the head of department of our BCom in accounting. We've got Jonathan Dillon, who is our head of school. Um, for professional accounting, so head of the postgrad and the undergrad um, together. Uh, we've got Angelique Landy, who is one of the lecturers in our BCom in accounting. Um, Judith Tablanche, who is the mastermind developer of our BCom in accounting. Um, so really glad to have you with us, Judith. And probably our star of the show, um, David Barnes, who's one of the current students um, in the BCom in accounting. Um, so guys, yeah, that is the the, the panel. Um, as I say, as we go, I'll give you more background on each of them. And as they chat, I think they'll also give you a sense of who they are. I think what I'm really hoping for a session like this is that we just touch on some interesting aspects of the Be Common Accounting at, at, at Mill Park. Um, it's one of our programs that we're really um, proud of and, and um, hugely passionate um, about. It's a key way um, that students qualify um, towards being chartered accountants. We've, of course, got our postgraduate as well that our BCom um, leads into. And, and so it's an integral part of our pipeline um, for, for developing and educating chartered accountants um, in, in South Africa. So really hopeful that this um, is a useful session for you guys who are, are attending. Um, we're going to go through, as I say, hopefully the, just the, the, the key aspects of the, the BCom and accounting um, and, and, and just talk about each person's experience um, on this. What you'll see on the side of your screen, if you look to the right, um, is we've also got a chat function. So please feel free to drop any comments in, in there. There's almost a separate chat function and a question function if you look on the, the extreme right. Um, so if you want to post a particular question, please um, post that there. Um, our team is monitoring that and they will either give you a specific answer or they'll um, give you a sense of where you can go to, um, to get support or more information on that. Bless you, Sean Marie. A um, little bit of, of hay fever and, and Stellenbosch going on there. Um, but yeah, guys, I think the what, what we're trying to do also this evening is just keep things um, pretty casual. We don't have a script. Um, I will. I say I'm a lot. People always tell me that I say, say I'm a lot. Um, we make mistakes. We sneeze. Um, and <laughs> that's just part of having real conversations. And I think it, it's part of the DNA of us as an um, academic team that that part of kind of our thinking and educational philosophy on what's important is that we don't present ourselves as pictures of perfection. We're real people. We want to journey with you. Um, education by nature is messy. Um, and so we don't want to present it as some um, perfect one size fits all um, solution. It's something we do together. It's a community based thing. Uh, we make mistakes together. We learn together. Uh, we fall together. We pick each other up. And I think that's the, that's a lot of the, hopefully the essence of, of, of learning. And I think, Certainly all the great people that I've met um, don't have everything sorted out. Everyone's a work in progress. Um, and the same goes for, for learning. The same goes for um, even the exceptional chartered accountants um, who, who pop out of our, our system. No one has it, has, it, has it figured out. And I think all we can do is be there for each other and go through um, these, these sorts of learnings um, together. So we're speaking, obviously, primarily about our BCom and accounting. Um, this, this evening, we run separate webinars um, for our postgraduate. Um, if you do need information about that, um, you can always uh, message us. We've got recordings of, of um, the postgraduate webinars from, from the past, and the information is, of course, up on our website. Certainly after this session, um, the recording of this session will be emailed to you, um, and you'll be able to share that with whoever you, you like. The good news um, in terms of our BCom accounting applications and registrations are still open um, for this year. For guys starting um, first year, the, the program only starts the 26th of February. Um, so there is still um, time. Um, obviously, a good idea to get those applications in as soon as possible if you are keen to join. But but the good news is that the applications are still um, open. Um, our second year um, has already started on the 5th of, of, of February. So that is already up and running. So, guys, I'm not going to keep 
talking too much further. I really want to get into the the discussions with the team around me. I don't want this to be a one way um, lecture, but um, very briefly in terms of the, the the structure of our program, we've of course had our postgraduate um, diploma in accounting, which is the final year of study before um, Cycus board exam. That's been running at Millpark since since 2019, and we already see that as the biggest contributor um, of all tertiary institutions in the country to the pipeline of chartered accountants. Um, our BCom is, is brand new though. It only kicked off beginning of last year uh, with, our, with, our, with our first year. So we, we started off with our first year um, delivery of our BCom and accounting um, last year. And then this year for the first time, we're kicking off our second year. Um, so next year we'll kick off our, our third year of our BCom and accounting. So by 2025, we'll have the whole thing um, running. Um, and we of course have intakes both at the beginning of the year and um, mid year, but we'll we'll get into that as we go, David. I want to get um, straight to to you. You joined our uh, B Common Accounting mid last year, um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. One of the one of the early adopters. Just as a starting point, what made you do it? What made made you take the plunge? Uh, yeah, I've been um, I've been threatening to do a VCOM since since I left school. Tried a number of times, to, to be honest. Uh, I went to UCT, coming out of out of school, straight into into university. I was only 17 years old, so I don't think I was in the in the frame of mind to to dive into an institution like UCT and and be tethered to it. Uh, so I, I spent a year at UCT and and didn't quite see the fit then. Uh, I then moved off and and went into the scuba diving industry. Uh, went travelling. And spent a lot of time outdoors, and, and you know, did what what most twenty-year-olds dream of doing. And we travelled through Asia, came back, and and then I thought, you know, let me let me give this a crack again. So I I went to Unisa and and signed up there. And the administrative challenges there sunk that very quickly. I I struggled to to do it. I, I live remotely, so I'm, I'm based up in northern KwaZulu Natal, and I just found, you know, with all the administration having to present yourself on site and et cetera, it, it, was, it was highly challenging. Um, I then tried to go via the ICD channel. Uh, and again, I, I had to go and do exams and, and sit in exam halls. And they always structured around public holidays, long weekends, that sort of thing. And now I'm in hospitality. So, you know, it was, it was always a clash. So I gave up uh, and you know, carried on building businesses and, and doing that and starting families. And last year, or well, year before last now, I um, decided to start becoming a lifelong learner, effectively. Um, I've got two young children. Due to our rural live lifestyle, we we homeschooling them. I thought as a good example, I'll, I'll school myself. So. I um I signed up at that stage. I was I was very interested in health and fitness, so I signed up for a one-year personal training course, uh, which was all online based, and really enjoyed it and and qualified at that. And soon after qualifying, I kind of said to my wife, "Listen, I, I need to carry on learning." And you know, you look at things like Coursera and you know, these various Udemy's and these short courses, and I kind of you know had my my sights set on I'm going for a master's, you know putting in the long run. And uh, accounting was always the thing that was left unresolved. I come from a family of accountants, so you know that's always brought up at the dinner table. Uh, and fortuitously, a business tech article appeared on my Google algorithm that said, hey, listen, you know what you're looking for? There it is, it's Mopark. Uh, so I, I checked it out. Ease of access, uh, very, very easy to, to get registered and then you know, get the information that I needed. Um, signed up, thought, well, I'll put myself on half load and, and see if uh, this fourth time lucky. Uh, put myself on half load and then got into the system. And yeah, it's it's been great. Yeah, it's a, I mean it's a fascinating background, David. Because I mean, there's, uh, from what you said, I think there's about fifty questions I want to ask you. But I'll start with <laughs> with, the, with the first one. I suppose what's you, you sound like you've got a lot going on in your life. I mean, it sounds like there's family, there's um, business, there's yeah. uh, uh living working remotely um mm. how has that been so far in terms of in terms of studying how, how have you found kind of the interrelationship with studies and and life i suppose so yeah you know i've, I've decided studying is something i want to do so you know i've, I've been able to make time for it I've, I've sacrificed other things that aren't as important to me and said you know 
setting is something that that I get fulfillment from. Uh, and you know, it's it hasn't been too difficult. I don't want to talk too early. I mean, I'm going second semester of first year, so and I'm moving off of half load onto full load now. So you know, I don't want to jinx things, but. Yeah, I found the flexibility that that Millpark has given me in managing my time and and being able to to do the program to be perfect for my lifestyle. Uh, you know, I I was very fortunate, and then a lot of people won't agree with me, but COVID COVID changed my life in that it it connected our rural living to the world. You know, we we were quite rural before COVID, and and after COVID, everything just kind of opened up for us. Uh, and and uh, I have a lot of access to technology now. Uh, I've got stable internet connections and uh, being at a resort, living at a resort, we've got backup power and, and I've got all the facilities in place that allow me to, to connect to the Mill Park system. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been wonderful to work with that system and, and, and fit it into my life with its flexibility. Uh, mm. And but it's saying that it's, it's also, it, it keeps you honest. There's no doubt about it. My biggest concern in doing it is, and you know, you do a lot of these online courses where it's kind of do it at your own time. It's a flexible course and, and take it at your pace and you never end up doing it. The procrastination beast comes in and, and stops you. Whereas I, I found out very quickly that Park has figured that out and, and you, you keep us on track, but you keep us on, on a flexible track, uh, which is, which is worked quite well for me. You know, it's, it's, you know, a, no, great, that's, a great answer. That's it's good to hear. I suppose one of the aspects you touch on is this uh, this, as this aspect, which maybe I can give a bit more context to, is the, the, the full workload and the half workload. And we kind of estimate, I mean, these aren't perfect estimates, but we estimate that if you're on the full workload, you probably need to put about 40 hours a week into your studies. And if you're on the half workload, probably about 20 hours um, a week into your studies. What we're quite deliberate about saying is that it's not full time and part time studies. I think and it touches almost into your, the uniqueness, I guess, of your, your life and your journey, David, is that everyone has different journeys and different lives. Um, and, and we don't want to be prescriptive from a program design perspective into how you should engage it. So what we don't say is, oh, you're working, therefore you do part-time, or oh, you are, um, I don't know, straight out of matric, and therefore you must do the, the, the full-time program. We say, these are the hours that would take to study on different bases, and we know different people need have different time available in different lives, and therefore you can tailor the, the, the work to your lives. It's not to say that it's a low workload, but it's to say that it's a flexible workload. So if you can find a way in your life of doing a full workload, it doesn't matter if you're working, it doesn't matter if you're not working. And the reverse, I guess, for students who are not working and, and studying full time, they could still choose to do a half workload if they wanted to study at a slower pace. Um, and I suppose those are the types of options I've seen available. David, tell me, take me a little bit through your thought process in, in saying you were initially on half workload and now you um, transitioning into, into full workload. So, you know, I, I took the half workload on the basis that I, I didn't know what I was in for. I'd, I'd failed at this a few times by, by becoming overwhelmed. Uh, as, I, as I started to understand the Millpark system, you know, I've, I've found systems within the system that I could then run. Uh, I, I love the way it's, it's all digitally presented and it gives me the ability to create notes whilst going through the material. Uh, and that allows me just to pull things out quickly, put them into my own notes, and then I'm ready to study when, when study time comes around. I've, I've, I've developed a few hacks which work for me uh, through the system. Uh, and you know, the, the initial six weeks of the course is not actually half load. So you, know, you, you take a half load and you arrive, and all of a sudden you're welcomed with full load for the first six weeks while you do the introduction to professional accounting and, and everything. And you're sitting there with all your peers and you're all in the same boat. And then you drop back and, and they carry on going and you, you kind of have conditioned yourself over six weeks to, to keep up. Uh, so I looked at that and thought, you know, I'm conditioned and I was chomping at the bit. Uh, and then I went into December and I was saying to my wife, you know, I think I want to make this full load. I'm not too sure. Maybe I'll I'll speak to more park and see how I can spread it over next year and 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 try and maybe three quarter load it for for both semesters. And then I looked at the calendar and it said my two subjects for the second semester were coming out on the 15th of April. And I thought, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna fall out of this this routine that I've built and and what I was doing. So that that motivated me to then say, right, let's let's load up the semester, give it a crack, see if I can make it work. Uh, 
And also I've, I've made a few peers on a, on a WhatsApp group that we put together on the side. And you know, I realized that if I don't keep up with them, I'm going to lose them and I'm going to have to make new peers. And we, yeah, we, we've got quite a, quite a great group of, of guys that have, that have done all night sessions and given one another motivational support and you know, got us through, through periods where we were all very, very confused or, or anxious. And you know, you, you build those and you don't want to have to rebuild them. So yeah, that was that was possibly one of my motivators for saying, you know, let's let's keep as much of it going now as possible and, and not fall behind. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. And it's, I mean it's great to hear that aspect, I suppose, that you have met the guys around you who who are studying and it's and I think a lot of the design, I, I suppose we hope with the with the program is it's not one of those courses where you just kind of feel on your own. Um, and you've, you, you don't have lecturers and fellow students around you. I suppose that's, that's a risk with online education is it's just you and your computer and, um, and, and you kind of in the wilderness. And I, I think so much of education, because it's hard, because it's a journey, um, I think there's that aspect of needing to feel together um, as part of a, a community. Um, and David, I'm going to come back to you because I've, I've, there's like 20 more things I want to ask you about, but I want to bring um, Angelique and Judith into the discussion at this point and, and ask, um, and uh, Judith, maybe you can talk a little bit about, because you I introduced you very briefly at the beginning of the session, almost as your role has been the person who's been in charge of curating the actual material um, for, for the BCom in accounting, not making it just almost a traditional BCom in accounting. Listening to to David and the things that that he said, what what resonates to um, with, with you and kind of what's been your thinking with kind of the creating the DNA of of what this BCom accounting looks like? Yeah, no, thanks, Gareth and David. It was lovely listening to you. And things might become very real very soon. Yeah, I just want to say we're real people, but you know how it works. I can hear my neighbors doing something, so my bark, dog is going to maybe bark. Um, apologies if that happens. I think listening to David and Gareth, you know, what's so really, really encouraging is to hear that notion of belonging and that flexibility because it's so, you know, one can envision a program, you can, um, you know, you can design something, you can intentionally build aspects into the program, but, you know, you need students that can communicate to you to really tell you, yes, you fit the mark or well, here are some areas that you can still work on to improve the program from a student's perspective. And I think student experience is so important to us. Um, and I think, you know, we always talk about, you know, it's all about creating that community of co-belonging and, you know, hearing how it was able to not feel isolated in our online space, but to really have the opportunity to build connection, get that peer support in. And, you know, over time, one would hope that, you know, that, it, it becomes a supportive environment between um, lecturers. You know, it's very important for us that, you know, uh, lecturers aren't seen, um, you know, as, as experts per se, per se. Yes, we know some of the technical content a lot, but we, we can learn every day. And it's so nice to co-create um, and learn with students um, because there's always different ways of looking and thinking. And it's almost that lifelong learning you were touching on, David. Because that's almost what we want from staff at Park is to really have that notion of growth, um, learning more f- things, you know, connecting with each other and then being sort of challenged, disrupt the thinking a bit. So I think the one thing that stands out for me that's really encouraging is that that connection that I could see. Um, mm-hmm. And then I really like the flexibility because you always have this debate, Gareth, I'll, I'll leave it to you to explain it, but asynchronous and synchronous. And we build those moments into the program. Um, for that flexibility and almost sometimes also to have those milestones um, where we actually, there are weekly milestones and, we, and you touched on it, but where we, we allow a lot of flexibility and we want people to appreciate it, but we also want to keep the momentum. We want to keep people honest. We want people to move together because otherwise you would also leave that uh, or, or lost a bit of that connection. So I think that's, you, you almost said things that really makes my heart warm um, because it's really that flexibility and that that community, that co-belonging that's so important for us. Um, and, and you know, those that, you know, releasing of material, lecturers checking in, having certain, um, you know, options for collaboration with students. Those are the things where 
you know, we try and think a bit differently, putting the modules a bit differently together, trying to, to create those moments where we can really provoke thinking. Um, and that, that, that's really some of the aspects that drive the design um, and the thinking. So, yeah, mm. I must say, I, I, I love hearing about your experience. So, so that's quite nice. So, Gareth, I don't know if you... No, you that's, that's you great. You love that. asynchronous and synchronous, so you can... You can yeah, no, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, I think, yeah, Judith loves to throw in the, the big words, the synchronous and asynchronous, and we'll talk about those um, just now. But I almost want to kind of throw it back to David and say, and ask David, I suppose, listening to some of what Judith has said, and I guess comparing maybe some of your because it sounds like you, you've studied at a few institutions, kind of aspects that have been most unexpected or pleasantly surprising um, on on the, 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 the BCom and accounting. I know we were chatting before and you were saying um, just the way the materials presented has been has been interesting um, to you. And maybe you can just touch upon, upon that, because I suppose one of the things a lot of prospective students ask us about is like, what the heck is this online course? Because there's there's a million ways to do an online course. We can put PDFs online. Um, we could just have, I don't know, recorded lectures where you just have to come to classes for four hours a day. Um, like like people want to understand like what 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 do we mean when we say it's an online BCom in accounting? And and kind of what what have you experienced on on that side of things, David? So yeah, I yeah, you know. I've been blown away by by the delivery of the course, uh, and and you know I've I've been experienced in education and from from a diving side of things. You know, it's it's not a not a, a university level course, but we've I'm an instructor. I've I've been instructor for twenty years, and I've I've been within the the PADI system, which is an American system, and you know they are they are a big organisation who puts a lot of effort into how they deliver educational content and. I was around when the whole prescriptive teaching philosophy came out, et cetera, et cetera, and then the media. And, you know, I, I didn't expect what I found on the Mopar course in terms of delivery, uh, as well as in terms of integration between subjects from a holistic point of view. So when you, when you arrive at the course and you do the, the, the IPAS and you, you come across eBike South Africa, which, you know, perfect for me because I'm a cyclist so this this thing immediately grabbed my attention but when, when you look at that concept you know initially I looked at it and I thought okay oh, so what's this all about how's it going to work but it, it's it's now started to make sense to me and you can you can plot your journey and you can see how your digital skills course and your maths course integrate together uh, and, and and they're both running you know alongside one another and, and this is this is something now that I'm going to assess moving from from half load onto full load is is, is am I still going to have that continuity between courses? But I think I will because economics and, and law, I don't think are too integrated. I'm seeing statistics now and advanced digital skills are definitely going to be be together. Uh, and I, I find that I find that awesome. You know, it's 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 great to be able to to flip through your courses. The platform delivers them. They they integrate well with one another. And at the end of it, you're going to have this qualification where you've got all the knowledge. And in my previous experience, it was go to this textbook learn out of this textbook it's written by some guy who's irrelevant to to this institution but this is the textbook we've chosen and i'd have to sit there and read a textbook and then i go into another subject and and, and they wouldn't they wouldn't relate like like the the current course i'm doing so i find that great and another massive thing is uh is this 15 minute consultation that you can have one-on-one -on -one with your your lecturer so my biggest drawback of of being at a Brick and mortar institution was I would have to sit in in lectures and and sit in cuts tutorials uh, and and sit through the whole class's questioning uh, and this is where I, I identify with prescriptive teaching is is you 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 dedicate your time to having to wait for everybody else to answer their questions and it's great to learn off of your peers and, and the questions they ask but I found this one on one consultation great because you can go through the material at your pace sort of and, until they, they give you the master that you have to achieve but you can go through the material and you can then book that 15 minute consultation and immediately you can be put on the right track and and i reckon one consultation is worth five percent in the final exam i'm telling you when i when i looked at it it was just that that's how i was i was quantifying my consultations so they're brilliant they're effective and you know it, it allows me again flexibility simply book get your consultation 
address the point that you're struggling with and and you're done you can carry on with your life and and, and focus on other things yeah. dave i'm just wondering after what you said sorry five percent in the exam is your hack 20 consultations and you get 100 percent yeah, there you go. <laughs> so they eventually told me to get to, to not not come back. <laughs> no, and it's I mean it's great that you you talk I suppose David about how I guess how you've tailored it to to your life and I, th I think part of I think some of the mentality of how we've designed the program is we know different people benefit from studying in different ways and um, there's kind of the aspect that Judith touched on um, where I'm not sure where Judith has gone. She looks like she's gone gone off screen. Maybe that's, that's just on my side, but I'm sure she'll pop back um, just now. But basically, the, from a from a study perspective, um, we've got the, the the learning material, which includes um, videos and quizzes and, and and material that you go through. And that's, I suppose, what we refer to as the asynchronous aspects of the course, the course that you can work at at two in the afternoon or two in the morning. It's really um, whatever works in, in your life. But then there's also the synchronous aspects. Um, I think that you're talking about, David, and that's the real-time aspect where um, you meet one-on-one -on -one with a lecturer or we've got group live sessions where, where like a lecturer will go through um, some of the topics and some of the, the interesting aspects for, for, for the week. We've got support via email. We've got kind of social media type platforms. And I think it comes from the understanding that different people like support in, in, in different ways. And it seems like, David, what you've been quite effective on in your journey so far um, is figuring out for your life what is needed. Um, and that, that's quite nice for, uh, I suppose, to see because it means there's this buffet of support giving you options on how you can be supported in the program, but it's not one size fits all in terms of we don't prescribe, you must do it like this, um, but rather you can pick and choose according to the things um, kind of that, 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 that you need and enjoy. Um, I wanted to, Angelique, I wanted to come to you a little bit because you're obviously on the ground with, with students in the, in, in the BCom um, and David is kind of a, a working student who's had quite a lot of life experience. Are there interesting examples of, of, of the other types of students, Angelique, that, that you've seen um, any cool stories, anecdotes? Um, is, it, is it quite a similar group of students or is there quite a lot of diversity? How would you kind of um, talk about the student cohort as a whole? Yes, yeah, so I think we have quite a diverse group of students. So we have students that are uh, freshly out of matric, studying full time, through us um, kicking it off. So we have our younger full-time students. Then we have a lot of students that's actually working where either their career has pushed them and they've reached their limit and they actually need to start doing a degree um, or they are scoping out. So we have lawyers wanting to upskill on the accounting side, doing our BCom, um, people that have their own accounting practice but just never have qualified as chartered accountants and realize that it's time now, that's what they want to do. Um, so we have quite a diverse group of um, students, both um, full-time, young, um, studying only, and then working, balancing work life with um, studies as well. Mm. No, that's awesome. And um, David, maybe I, what, what, what's interesting to, to, to chat about is, is I, maybe the degree to which your thinking has changed um, since you've started the, 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 the program. I mean, I'm wondering, I suppose, also on a very practical level, um, do you look at the world differently um, today versus, say, I don't know, six, seven months ago? Like, what, what, what's impacted you from that point of view? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I um, spent December implementing teams in my businesses, uh, starting to put in various systems and, and you know, move move out of OneDrive, uh, Excel onto SharePoint. And, you know, we, we are now just completely transferring how we communicate. Uh, yeah, you know, my view on data is, is now, I've, I've always been interested in data, but, but I'm now very interested in data. And you know, I, can, I can see this course, although we're becoming accountants, you know, it's very, very data focused and, and it's definitely where the future is going. So it's it's giving me lots of insights and and it's changing my perspective on things and then allowing me to to make it applicable to my day to day professional life and you know sitting sitting out here and in what a lot of people would think is paradise we we are quite disconnected from what's going on in the corporate world and and you know what our guests are experiencing so I, I kind of looked at all my staff and my management and said listen we're going to do this teams thing and I thought I'd get a big pushback from them because you know they've all decided to come and, and spend time and in, uh, in the bush 
Uh, and they all started talking to the guests and the guests were like, yeah, we're all on teams. So, you know, everybody's got very excited that, you know, teams has found its way to Sudwana Bay. And, you know, it's, it's come through Mill Park. And, and uh, I suppose for a younger generation that's come out of school now, teams is, is probably very relevant. But, you know, for us, we, we moved into the, a similar sort of style as what I've been experiencing now doing the course. And then, yeah, as I say, you know, the, the insights gained from, from the material that I've been given have been applicable to, to my business. Yeah. Cool. It's going to be fascinating uh, catching up with you in, in six months, 12 months, 18 months from now and, and kind of hearing similar anecdotes as you as you progress. And it's just interesting that you've almost got the ability to um, almost like look at some implementations on the ground as you as you go. I think that's that's it's going to be a fascinating journey to to watch and also just amazing to hear that. Um, and I suppose what we all think about in education is you never want education just to be this textbook in the cloud that's um some theoretical thing it's, it's it's amazing to hear that it's it's got concrete value um it sounds like yeah. and there's there's really changes you're able to make so my, my business partner is the ceo uh takes care of that side of things and uh he now always says to me you think about everything in terms of where it goes in the ledger uh so yeah he can he can pick up you know i deal with operations and then he can now pick up that there are all these seeds being planted in my head by more part and <laughs> you know he, he he laughs and looks at me and says yeah you know your 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 analytical thinking of accounting now is 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 definitely changing uh so yeah it's it's taking and, and, taking and cool to hear that it's, it's not just the debits and credits it sounds like there's also the the data and the decision making and the the other aspects that come into it um see angelique um looking very happy as the as one of the digital lectures here <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing little bits of things and I'm like, yes, something stuck. And uh, that's great to hear. And it's great to see that a student is applying what it's practical, what we are teaching. It's not just theory. It's not just a textbook. It's something that um, they can go and immediately apply in their business. And that's that to me is what I want to see. And Jonathan, I must bring you in here because you obviously are um, our, our head of school kind of overseeing kind of postgraduate and undergraduate, but um, in a former life, you were um, a math management accounting and finance lecturer. And, and I think, I mean, I know you deeply passionate about almost the the, the, the pervasive skills, but not just accounting skills that, that these kinds of programs can um, help with and, and, and the, how it contributes to decision-making and good, just general life choices, um, I suppose, so, so to speak. Yeah, I know. Spot, spot on, Gareth. Um, I've got many former lives, so in, in a few of them I have been in management accounting and finance, but I've been in corporate and I've been at a traditional university as well where I've given face-to-face -face lectures. And having um, evolved, matured, moved, whatever, to where I am now, um, and even having been a student, you know, being a chartered accountant, I've been through the journey of having done a BCom where I sat in lectures and I was taught the content. I honestly came out of my BCom. Um, I could do debit credits. I, I could do maths with management accounting. But if I had to make decisions, I was very weak. Like I had the head knowledge, but I didn't have the, you know, how to bring it together. And when I'm hearing what David's saying and what I know about our BCom is you're on point. Like it's it's really, really cool in terms of it's beautiful in a sense, just how we've constructed the BCom. And it's an integrated learning journey where you're not only putting the puzzle pieces together. So, so to just use the example of, you know, my education would have been I do an economics module, your macroeconomics, and you do a business management module. And then you, in another department, you, you get offered accounting or whatever. They don't talk to each other. You, you, you're just getting this knowledge along. And yeah, I mean, we got to where we are today with that. But I think there's a better way of doing it. And that's what we endeavored to do here when we crafted the BCom. And it's um, it's, it's this thing of problem solving, critical thinking. I mean, I even look at my kids and I'm trying to get that into them. Like, you know, what's the why behind what we do? And our BCom is built that way. It's got this thing of we're not just doing and learning for the sake of learning, but it's this thing of understanding why we are learning this and how it links to something else and then getting in actually quicker to this point of being able to, in, in the management accounting and finance domain, we call it add value, you know, where you can be a, a decision maker and you add value to an organization. And as I hear David speaking, it's not only add value to an organization one day, but it's a, 
it's a program that's adding value to your life on the go, like real time. You don't have to wait for it to come together or wait for your training contract later for things to come together and fall in place. Um, yeah, real time, it happens. And Jonathan, while you're talking about that kind of down the line of real time um, and kind of that 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 realness to, to to the program, I think something we often grapple with is in an online course. I mean, if you if you and I'm, I'm thinking, I suppose, from the guys who don't know the course on the ground, you look at an online course like Millpox, Be Common Accounting, and you think, well, like what role do lecturers actually play? Like I log into my computer, I work through the material, and then I write tests, right? Like what what are what are your reflections on on that sort of thing and like knowing our team of of, of staff who, who walk with students in the in the program what's your understanding and belief about the role that the, the lecturers play in in each student's journey yeah and it's not only a, a belief it is a grounded understanding of having done it um, my, my journey at Moore Park has been that I was in the PGDA teaching management accounting finance um doing this thing of teaching within a connected online community, not just online. So we strive in our BCom as well to be connected with our students and for our students to be connected with each other. And um, that's why we'll, we'll sometimes actually use the term we're an online contact university. Like we don't, you know, online contact because you should never feel alone when you're studying with us. It organically happened, Dave, that you created this WhatsApp group and you guys, you know, Okay, you actually, <laughs> part of your doing full workload is like, you don't want to lose your friends. Like, I've got to keep up with them. But that that's a sense of community. There's a sense of like, I'm connected here with people. And although it's online, you build these connections. And we facilitate that with discussion forums or live sessions, you know, whatever it may be. We, we've built a program where at the forefront is this thing of, we need to ensure there are connections between um, lectures and students. Well, this is where the synchronous and asynchronous comes in. So we don't have like lectures where now you must be at five o'clock because we're going to lecture this content, etc. It's, it's flexible. You access that when you want. But if you want to have moments where you connect, obviously you have to schedule that. Like in your work life, we, we've got to sync our diaries and we've got to say, okay, let's have coffee at this time. Or that. And we, we have to have these moments of connection, um, although we're on a learning journey, which is great. Yeah. Awesome, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, Tamara, you've been very quiet so far. I'm trying to think what I should what I should ask you about. And maybe I can just say you've you've been you've been listening and observing the conversation so far. What out I don't to want you? to be quiet, Gareth, but I, I have not been um <laughs> I've been introduced, but there hasn't been a question that's come up on my well, way. You, so I'm actually are, waiting for a question. You're our new um BCom um, head of department this year. Um what what, what are you thinking for for the year ahead what are you excited about well wow, guys well firstly david thank you for joining us i think like from my side it's well respect of students this is literally my third or fourth week that i'm only at mill park now so this is a very exciting journey that i'm also tackling with with you um and it's absolutely brilliant to hear what david is saying and to know that um you know that is what mill park provides to students and I mean I think um, a couple of years ago if you had to think of or if someone had to tell you oh I'm studying online then you, you almost had this picture of oh Shane man you know are you working and studying and you know that poor person they're probably getting their books delivered and then you know they've got absolutely no one that's taking their hand and they need to sit there and do everything themselves and I mean for me it's just absolutely brilliant to see what we actually do for our students. It's not a, oh, you know, here's your textbook, there you go. It's what we've said the whole time. Now you've got your videos that you can listen to over and over again. The textbooks, the lecturers that are literally sitting here with our uh, weekly live classes to actually take the work that you've studied during the week and connect it to real life scenarios. Like how do we actually use this? What do you need to do with this information that you've learned? And, you know, just, Sometimes even checking in, are you okay? Um, which is something that that all of us, you know, need at, at certain points of our lives. And so, yeah, all the various platforms for, for me, it's just that it's amazing to be part of something where, you know, you're taking this journey with the student. Um, you're not just sitting here in the background, carrying on with 
yeah, you and your team, you and your team and the students who are also part of this team and this journey together. So yeah, that's quite amazing. And I'm looking forward to that to answer your question, Gareth. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Sean Marie. Um, David, for for the, the the kind of students who kind of thinking of, of of joining kind of BCom, I'm interested in your experience just so far, and maybe almost advice that you could potentially give to to the guys who're thinking, wow, maybe I should start first year at the beginning of this year. What's what's the stuff that you I suppose know now that you wish you'd known at at the start? Are there are there tips, advice, things for you to give them to think about? Um, things to get in order in their lives, like what what can the guys be thinking about and doing at this stage if they want to set themselves up for success in in the program? So uh, yeah, it's, it's a difficult question, guys, because you know I'm, I'm sure there's a, a a huge range of of prospective students out there, all with different things going on in their lives. And you know, I suppose if I look at my journey, not not so much at Moor Park, but but all the way to where I am now. The most important thing is they must be sure that they want to do this. Uh, you know, if, if if they are looking to become entrepreneurs and you know, run their own businesses and go that route, or if they're looking to get into the world of finance or become CAs, uh, and and that is their dream and their passion, and they're sitting there right now saying, you know, this is the goal, this is what I've got my my sights set on, nothing must stop me. Uh, <laughs> I think you'd be hard pressed to beat a system like Millpox to achieve it. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've done a lot of thinking of, of, of what challenges face the youth today going off to tertiary education. And then, you know, to be honest, I'm, I run a business that competes with Millpox. You know, I'd like to convince people, hey, you know, go and scuba dive, take a gap year, go work on the yachts, do that sort of thing. And you know, if, if that's your role, um, I'm in that game. And, you know, there's a lot of students who just want to, to pursue their dreams of, of, of CA, finance, entrepreneurship, and going off to, to universities today in South Africa, there are more challenges ahead of you than you can imagine. Uh, and, and you can see it. Uh, the, the, and you know, even if you look at the States and what's going on in their Ivy League university, and the brick and mortar university, is, it's, got, it's got challenges away from education. Uh, and, and to be honest, if you if you're at the stage where you're looking for knowledge, you're looking to qualify, you're looking to, to roll your sleeves up and, and, and chase your goals, you know, you, you, you want to just cut through all the rubbish. Like go, go straight to the information, have it delivered to you, and, and be able to, to achieve your goals in your own terms. Uh, and I think, I think Moorpark, you know, uh, and I, I, no, there's no affiliate marketing here. Um, I am a student, and you know, this is the first time I'm meeting everybody on, on, this, on this talk. But you know what, what's going on here is is incredibly progressive. Uh, it's it's there, there's definitely a vision, uh, and and I think it's a vision which suits our current stage in in you know in the world's timeline and our society and and where we're going as a society. And you know, like you say, you'd like to see me in six months and eighteen months, etc. I'd be very interested to see where Mill Park is in ten years from now, and 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 where other institutions are. Uh, these these old established institutions that are, are getting are getting smothered by 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 stuff that's not relevant to students today, uh, guys who just want to get qualified. So, yeah, if, if you are a student looking to pursue what Millpark can offer you, I you know I think you'd be hard pressed to find a better opportunity. You know, to be honest, uh, and yeah, I'd, I'd advise David, to get what you what, what you mentioned, I guess about yeah, just almost the education of the future, I guess, is what you what you're talking and kind of I think a lot of the 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 kind of our belief has often been in terms of like the DNA of education hasn't changed in terms of we want to learn with people, we want to learn in in communities, but there's just a zillion extra tools now that technology has provided us, and we can almost get this best of both worlds, where you get the feeling of and connection of being with your peers, with lecturers together in a classroom. But you've got the flexibility and accessibility of being anywhere in the world, study at study at any time, um, and I think that's that's hopefully the world of of opportunities that it it opens. Um, Angelique, I'm going to ask you a, a similar question to to David, almost in terms of how stu prospective students can set themselves up for success. I mean, as a lecturer in the program, you've um, obviously you've you've um, lectured a few of the modules a few times over, and you've seen, I guess, a couple of the 
repeated mistakes that students students make and maybe you've also got some tips advice for for students for kind of setting themselves up for success potentially at a philosophical level high level like like david is saying but also i suppose in the very practical practical aspects like just how do they clear their schedules how do they think about a week ahead like like how, how should they be kind of almost thinking about this and and setting their lives up for success as they as they think about embarking on some kind of journey like this yeah sure so Definitely, we offer a lot of support um, programs and platforms to our students, and I think it's very important to use that. Make use of the live sessions that we have. Um, like David also mentioned, uh, make use of the consultations one-on-one -on -one with your lecturer, which I think at most contact universities or distance universities, you don't have that opportunity to book 15 minutes with your lecturer and discuss something that you've been struggling on. So don't waste time. Book a, book a consultation. Um, we give you study plans, follow that, we we prompt you. So really just make use of the support that Mopoc offers as an institution, but also the availability of speaking directly to your lecturer. Make use of that, um, clarify anything that's not clear, um, because that's just going to help you um, when you have to prepare for an exam or a test. Uh, so yeah, just use what, what we are offering um, and really dive in. And Angelique, I mean, the, the fact that you mentioned it, I suppose, implies that not everyone who's on the program does use the, the the all the support mechanisms what what do you what do you kind of put that down to in, in in terms of kind of how i guess the students are thinking about education and the the way they engage in the program yeah i think students are conditioned and are still used to the traditional way of um delivering a, a course like this or a module like this um, and I think they, they don't realize the benefit in reaching out to, um, like David said, working with your classmates um, and forming that bond or um, ha attending live sessions. They don't realize the value that it can add. Um, we don't expect you to just have a textbook or just work through the course material on your own. If that's the way that you study, then, then that's great. And if that's um, how you are going to succeed in your studies, then that's awesome. But I really use um, and, and and again, I think there's a there's a difference in using the platforms and the options that is available. That really makes a difference, and I've seen it. Um, instead of struggling for two or three hours with a certain question, come to us. We're here. We want to help you, and I think that really makes a difference. Mm. Yeah, no, spot on, Angelique, and that, that's I think that's such a key point in terms of almost the the role that that support can play. If 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 I suppose students feel the need to struggle by themselves, then you, it, it can take forever to sort something up. But sometimes that quick 15 minute call to a lecturer, ah, oh, I'm struggling with this. What about this? What about that? Oh, no, no, no. Think about it like this. Think about it a little bit differently. Oh, cool. Got it. Okay. Save myself four hours. Um, I think those just that proactive consultation and kind of talking and throwing ideas around. I mean, that's the heart, I think, of of education. And, and hopefully um, the philosophy that we bring into this, that this is not doing education alone. This is a community where we where we kind of doing these, this thing to, together. Um, panel, I think we've 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 kind of gonna start to to, to wrap up, but I certainly uh, we've we've still got a few more minutes left. So I want to give everyone kind of a, a chance for any last thoughts that we um, kind of haven't touched on. Um, Judith, you are back with us. Um, so it's great to great to have you back. Any any kind of final thoughts from from your side in terms of this discussion? Well, I hope maybe it wasn't covered because otherwise I'm going to sound like um, I can't remember um, very, very long. So please help me if it, this was covered. I think something um, I could hear bits when I was kicked off the stage. I could hear bits. So I think something, David, that I think is very dear to our hearts is the fact that the, the, it has to be relevant. Um, and from a design and a development perspective, what drives all the development is the why and the relevance. Um, we can all teach content, um, all work through that. But unless we know why we have to learn something and how we're going to use it, um, you know, it's not, um, it becomes a tick box exercise. Um, and I think that's something that's, that's really important and drives the whole process. You've mentioned the integration, that's really important for us as well. But the last thing that I think is sort of, part of the heart of the philosophy besides the co-belonging and the co-creation is really the holistic teaching, meaning it's more than just the technical. That doesn't mean the technical is not important, but it puts the technical in its rightful place because it's offered within a broader framework, within a values dimension, within 
all the skills that you're going to need to function in a diverse um, environment, in probably remote online working environments and teams, different, uh, you know, picking up on cues with people when you work with them and you have to um, have a conversation and sometimes intense and robust conversations, sometimes it's in person, sometimes it's online. And, you know, all of those um, almost attributes really have that focus is, is quite important for us. Um, so, yeah, I think those are two things that I just want to put emphasis on that's really key and parcel of how we think about um, the development and the design of the qualification. Awesome. Thanks, Judith. Jamri, last thoughts from your side? Um, yeah, you know, girls, I'm listening to Judith as well, and, and I think it also links to, to what Angelique um, has said a bit earlier on, and I think that that was something new that I also saw for the first time, and Judith, I must commend you on an absolute uh, brilliant development, um, uh, what you and, and the team, you know, that you guys been doing. So... I think that the brilliant part, and David, I think that's maybe also a, a, a first for you from all, you know, the places that you were maybe at, and that is when you are a student and you're actually engaging with the material. So um, I've also done, a, a, well, I've also studied online um, a year or two ago. So I'm also used to a lecture online, uh, uh, pre-recorded, that's standing there and going through material or maybe just um, almost in a presentation format that's been pre-recorded and that you are watching as a student but working through what we are presenting to our students is so collaborative and the different formats and structures and functions and all the it's it's almost like whatever works for you as a student is going to be in there there's a bit of reading there's someone that's actually doing a live video. Then you have to, uh, you know, uh, write a journal. And in this sense, you need to take or participate in a poll activity. Or once you've learned something, you need to reflect. For everything that you're learning, the lecture is then they're working through a very applicable scenario so that you can actually apply what you've just theoretically and technically learned to, you know, the world of work. And that for me is absolutely brilliant. And it relates to what David has also said that what he's learned, he's able to now implement it in his business and in, in his personal life. So that for me is, yeah, that's beautiful. And yeah, that, that makes me look forward to, to our journey together. Awesome and well said, Shamri, thank you. Um, Angelique, from your side? You know, from my side, I wanna echo what both Judith and Shamri just said is, how we deliver this module is more than uh, this course is more than just um, the technical. Uh, we want to see how you apply it in business. And that's a big focus for us on the delivery side is really making it real for you guys, making it real and how you can apply it. Um, so for me, just leaving varsity, there was a, a big difference from the technical knowledge, the textbook knowledge, and then what is actually expected of me in the workplace. And that's something that this course is absolutely addressing. We are teaching you on a practical manner how to apply that technical and uh, theory. So it's um, for me, that's definitely something that's standing out about um, the BCom that we offer. Mm. Awesome. Um, JD, last one from you. Sorry, when I say JD, we call him JD. As, uh, that's Jonathan, as Jonathan Dillon, as you guys will see. <laughs> Not your shirt or the shoes or anything like that. Um, two thoughts. The one is it's connected. It's this thing of if anybody's done management accounting and financial budgeting, they, they'll understand this term of zero based budgeting. And that's how we built the, the BCOM. Like, it's not a, like a lot of money's gone into the investment and to design and craft this thing. We wanted to think about doing it as best possible. And this, you, you mentioned IPAS or IPAS, the, the first module, Introduction to Professional Accounting, you know, and like, there's just, don't <laughs> come ready to see something different, like in our BCom. So like, come expectant, like not only of this thing of learning the why and all of this, but come expectant to see something beautiful in the BCom and how it's crafted. Um, and then the other thing is just a quick advert that, you know, we've got uh, other programs. I just saw one or two questions in the chat and some students may actually qualify for our bridging program. 
Um, so if you've got an NQF level seven qualification already, accounts to second year, the bridging program is the pathway for you to do that, to get into PGDA on the journey that you want. And the way we crafted the BCom, I'm just going to note here as well that we've, we've made sure that we cover psycho bases, the CA, we focus on training prospective chartered accountants, but we've also looked to other syllabus, et cetera, and there's, there's um, thought that's built in there to make sure we also, you know, cover domains like the chartered and student management accounting and that, and our BCom gives you a good base to go in any direction that you want. So don't think our BCom is just focused on CAs. I mean, we are in the business of wanting to make sure we train CAs well, respective CAs well, but we want to be in the business of training professional accountants and adding value to whoever wants to be in that domain of a professional accountant. There we go. Thanks, G. Uh, G, that's Gareth. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Um, David, you've been the star of the show, um, so I'm going to give kind of final words of wisdom to you. It's, just, it's been great having you just share, I think, some of your, your journey. Um, it's, been, it's been just interesting, I suppose, to hear your, your life background and the things you've grappled with as you've, as you've progressed. And as I say, I'm going to be fascinated to kind of hear your story six months, 12 months, 18 months, and, and of course, hopefully when you graduate at the, the end of the BCom. Final kind of words from, from you. Yeah, just probably as you, I'd, I'm also going to be fascinated to see where I am in, in six months and three years from now, and you know, see how far how far I go with this and and with Millpark, and you know, uh, I'm going to be watching Millpark. So you guys, you guys must keep that in the back of your minds while you while you're busy with what you're doing, because you know, as 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 a non-student, just as as a member of the general public looking looking to the future to see what's going to be around for my kids and and you know any philanthropic endeavors I might undertake later in life in South Africa. You know, education is in my mind key and we, we need access to it. Uh, so yeah, Mopak Mopak is carrying a a torch at the moment that I hope it it can take all the way to the finish line. So yeah, uh, best of luck to all of you on your journey. Amazing. Yeah. No, thanks, David. That's very, very kind of you. And guys, just to, to remind you, I've seen a couple of questions in the in the comments about the, the psycho accreditation side of thing. I think you guys will know that our postgrad is psycho accredited and it's already the biggest contributor in South Africa to the pipeline of CAs. Um, our BCom is currently in the process of accreditation with psycho, a very normal process um, that psycho follows um, for, for new programs that don't accredit them right from, from the start. Um, we've got all our plans in place with Psyker to hopefully be accredited by the, the end of um, this year. Um, and I think, like David and the team have said, I think we we um, breaking all the boundaries um, in the design of the BCom. We're really excited. psycho has got a new competency framework um, called CA of the Future um, that's all designed around um, all these future-looking competencies that, that um, will make these future CAs future-proof. Um, and able to add massive value to to um, yeah society at, at at large and especially in their roles as chartered accountants. So very excited about that 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 future ahead. We working closely with Psyca in in the journey and yeah feeling feeling confident that we'll be making some good announcements about the accreditation of the program um, absolutely latest by by the end of the year. Um, so yeah, guys, I think that pretty much um, is the end of the webinar. Um, just again, say thank you so much to the panel for joining the interesting and thoughtful discussion. And thank you guys um, for, for joining. As I said, the recording will be available after the session. It will automatically be emailed to you. You're welcome to forward that to anyone who would find it useful. Um, and stay on our, on our mailing list and on our, on our social media platforms for information about future webinars like this. Um, it's been great chatting. Um, and thank you so much for joining. Good evening. And a big thank you, Gareth, also to David. And just to clarify, David was not paid. David did not get 1% or one extra mark in anything. But thank you for your time as well, David, being a great student. Cool. Thanks, 100%. Guys. Thanks, guys.